good afternoon, commissioners. Let's begin this evening's meeting. We'll begin with a word of prayer and then go into honoring our flags. If you would, stand and pray with me, please. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the many blessings that you give us each day. Thank you for the wonderful community that, that we are blessed to get to live and serve in. And we pray, uh, Lord, as leaders, that you would guide us and to be to be wise and to be good stewards of the city's resources. We thank you for uh, our country as, as the 4th of July is, is approaching. We thank you, Lord, for um, our country and the freedoms that we enjoy. May we not take them for granted. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Join me in honoring our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Our meeting is called to order. Ms. Reyes, could we please have a roll call? Commissioner Lovett? Here. Commissioner Madrid? Commissioner Casaus? Here. Commissioner Elliott? Mayor Pro Tem Bryant? Here. Commissioner Garza? Commissioner Rowley? Here. Commissioner Paula? Here. Mayor Morris? Here. Thank you, Ms. Reyes. Appreciate that. Next is approval of the agenda. Commissioners, do you recommend rearranging or removing any of the items on tonight's agenda? I'll make a motion we approve. Second. Motion to approve from Commissioner Lovett and second from Mayor Pro Tem Bryant. Commissioners, please vote. And Commissioner Casaus, if I could have your vote, please. Yes. Thank you. And the vote is five to zero, and the motion is carried. Our agenda has been approved. Next is approval of minutes. Two sets of minutes to approve this evening. The first are the Thursday, June 17th, 2021 meeting. Those meeting minutes are in your packet. I assume you've had a chance to review those. Were there any corrections, or is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion to approve from Commissioner Casaus. Second. Second from Commissioner Rowley. Commissioners, please vote. And the vote is uh, five to zero in uh, favor, and the motion is carried. The minutes have been approved. Next is uh, the minutes from the Tuesday, June 22nd, 2020 meeting. Commissioners, those meeting minutes are in your packet. Are there corrections or is there a motion to approve as printed? Make a motion to approve. Motion, motion to approve from Mayor Pro Tem Bryant. Second. Second from Commissioner Paula. Commissioners, please vote. Commissioner Casaus, if I could have your vote, please. Yes. Thank you. And by a vote of five to zero, the motion is carried. Thank you, commissioners. Next is recognition of visitors. Thank you for those of you that have joined us this evening. We look forward to hearing from you when we reach the point in the agenda that you're here to share with us. Uh, we have no awards, uh, proclamations, or presentations, so we are on to receipts of petitions and communications. And we have a, a few planned presentations here this evening. The first is communication regarding Friendship Center reopening. Ms. Barbara Riggin. Ms. Riggin, it's good to see you. Thank you. 
opening in April, we have started to see an increase in participation. During the month of April, we had 58 seniors attend activities. In May, there were 77, and in June, there were 79. This does not include the number of seniors who pass through Friendship on their way to the mill site to, to get their mill. Um, Charisma served a total of 6,473 mills during the month of May to seniors in the dining room as well as to the homebound seniors. Staff has been very busy. I have a slideshow here I would like for you to look at. If Celine will go to the next slide. If she's ready. We, we really did have this planned out. We worked hard on this this afternoon, all day long. Timing was the, of the essence, and here we go. Yeah. I'm sure we'll, we'll be viewing it shortly. <laughs> she was going to give me the clicker, and I told her no. I should have said yes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good so far. Yes. <laughs> so City of Clovis Senior Services is located at Friendship Senior Center, and here we go. Um, seniors enjoy the gardening class with Zandy Bunch, um, the ice cream social, and having fun playing a game called water hydration. There are three pool tables and snooker tables, so come out and play. We held a Mother's Day tea in May, and Miss Claire Burroughs graciously served tea to a group of ladies. Can you see the smile in her eyes? She was very excited to be there. Thank it's you, Miss Claire. the first time I drank tea. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies made fancy hats so that they could wear them while watching an episode of The Crown and enjoying tea time together. The most recent activity was a tool wreath making class, just in time for Independence Day. Debbie wanted a big yellow one to hang on her wall. We also have a theme-based bingo once a month, and June was superhero, or in this case, super program coordinator. And on July the 15th, we will be celebrating Shark Week at Bingo at 1.30. Some of these activities are by reservation, so contact the office the day before if you would like to reserve a seat. There is a calendar of events posted at www.cityofclovis.org, or you can stop by 901 West 13th from 8 to five Monday through Friday to pick up a copy. Um, I would also like to share with you this evening, um, I wanna give you an update on the most recent reopening guidelines that have been issued by the New Mexico State um, Aging and Long-Term Services Department. Um, the Aging Department encourages centers to follow the guidelines to help seniors remain safe. Um, we've kind of been going back and forth this week with several different guidelines coming out. Um, after, after the conversations um, this morning with the division director, Denise King, um, that department has issued a list of uh, frequently asked questions, and so I've provided those with you this evening. Um, I believe that many seniors across the state of New Mexico has contacted their department with questions about that, um, the guidance. Um, however, under, under the current guidelines, um, Although the governor has opened up the state 100% today, um, there are still some guidelines that senior services will, will need to follow. Um, so um, the first guideline is the front doors at Friendship Senior Center, which have been locked since March of 2020, are now unlocked and open to the public. Um, seniors are still able to park in the south lot and use the east door if they choose to. Based on the guidance, if a senior facility has greater than 85% of staff vaccination rate, they're able to open up at 100%. And under 85%, the center can open up at 75%. Based on these percentages, the senior services department will open up at 75%. Um, effective today, actually, the, the doors were unlocked today. Um, staff will routinely be tested for COVID-19 and will require that all staff wear a mask, um, regardless of their vaccination status. 
COVID-19 safe practices will continue and cleaning and disinfecting protocols will continue to be followed. Um, the New Mexico Aging Long-Term Services suggest we continue contact tracing and screening for staff and seniors. Um, this is all done with the My Senior Center and it's, it works out perfectly. Um, we've got that in place. I do have a short tutorial for you to view. Um, this, is the only, this is the only one that I could actually find. It's offered by the My Senior Center. So you can take a look at that. And I'm going to go right over to the People tab. Now on the left hand side you can see I have these little icons here. You may not see all of them because some of them are just for me. Uh, and if you don't see any of these little icons, click the little bell to open and close that sidebar. And then we're going to click on Contact Tracing. Now of course Contact Tracing is to help you find out you know, if anybody comes down with COVID or anything else like the flu or really anything at all, you can figure out who those people have come in contact with. So first off, we're going to click on New Trace down at the bottom here. And then all you're going to do is start typing in someone's name. So if you find out that someone has contracted COVID or any other illness at all, you can come in here and you can start searching for that person. You just type in a name and as you start typing, it'll give you a list of people that match what you've typed in. And then you can select that person. And then you can put in their date that they tested positive. And then we can say when their earliest symptoms were. And then we click trace user. And here it's going to show us a list of people that may have been uh, exposed to COVID or whatever else you may be concerned about. And we do put them into different categories. You can see our different tabs here. We have a list of everybody uh, that may have come in contact with that person. We can see uh, the danger level, indirect, and so on. Um, and then, of course, we can send out a notification if we need to call these folks or if we need to send an email address. And, of course, we have to have their phone number in the system or their email address in the system. So uh, if you don't have that, you may need to find a way to contact them uh, uh, some other way, of course. And you can export this list to an Excel sheet if you need to. Thanks a lot, folks, and have a great day. Stay healthy. So the way that the contact tracing works, if a senior comes into the building at 9 o'clock in the morning Hello, thanks for joining me. and another in senior comes world. in that afternoon at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they may have an indirect contact with each other because they were so spread out. However, seniors who are coming in to the mill site or to the Friendship Center between 11 and 1, of course, they're going to be direct contact with each other um, using the same spaces. Um, we do have a kiosk at the back door, and I meant to include a slide and it didn't get on there, but we do have a kiosk at the back door at the east door of the Friendship Center. And so any senior who is coming in through the east door will be able to scan their card and do contact tracing that way. Um, if they do come in through the north entrance, the main entrance, and go directly into the dining room, the dining room will have a... Um, a little scanner that they can scan those cards and then at the end of the day we just have to import those into the My Senior Center and it's going to also count those um, seniors. So um, with that I stand for any questions or I don't know if Claire has anything else to add. Um, just that we've been in contact with Mr. Brasinio with La Casa de Buena Salud with the um, La Casa Senior Center. They're planning to continue as they are now and just requiring that anyone using the facility wears a face covering. Thank you. And I know that Baxter Curran Senior Center has a meeting scheduled next 
Thursday at 10 o'clock for the general public, and they will also be talking about um, moving forward with, with programs. Is there any other questions that, yes, sir? No questions, but I, I, I just wanted to thank you for the update, and I'm so glad to hear that the doors are unlocked. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And, and a lot of our seniors are too. They're very happy that they can now come in through the front and so. Yeah, yeah, yes, well, sir? thank you for, for your perseverance over the last, how many months it's been, but year plus. And uh, yes. so glad to know that the, the programs are moving forward. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for the update. Thank you. Have a great day. Commissioners, I wanted to mention before we move on that uh, Commissioner Madrid has joined the meeting uh, by phone as, as, uh, as well as Commissioner Casaus joining us by, by phone. Uh, so six of the eight are, are in the meeting this evening now. Um, also under communications this evening, we have discussion regarding polling locations for municipal officer elections. Ms. Melanson. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Commissioners. I come to you as the City Clerk this evening. Um, by statute, the Commission needs to designate polling locations by the end of July for our municipal election in March. If we do not, then we are required to use the county polling locations, which most of them are the same. I would rather not be out in the county for a few of our voters. Um, so I'm just coming to you to talk about it Mr. Hewitt, I believe, has a map. So the red stars are our current locations. So of course, Colonial, YRB, Fire Station 5, Roy Walker, and Trinity Methodist. For our voters, both ours and the county, the only one that they get confused about is Trinity Methodist. The county does use Farmers Electric, which would probably be right between the D and the O in Estacado. Um, they use that mainly because they still have to take care of the northern part of the county, so it's sort of an easier access for them. We, um, we use Trinity Methodist, one, because it was on 21st Street. We thought it was an easy access for people, but I am just coming. We will bring in the resolution to you at the next meeting. So just coming to ask any input, any recommendations, anything you would like to change, or are you all satisfied with where they are? Great. Well, thank you for that. Commissioners, any comments? Mayor. Yes, Commissioner Kasaus. Uh, I have a question. Have we ever had a voting place at Bella Vista School? Commissioner Casals, with all of the changes in the world, the schools are not really an option for voting locations any longer. Um, with all of the regulations they have on people in and out, our election is in March, so school is in, hopefully, in full session, in person, and it just becomes a real problem for their security and so I think pretty much everybody in New Mexico has moved away from using any school locations for voting. So we try to use places that we know are going to be either minimal access or not, you know, no, no usage on that election day. Thank you, Leanne. My next question is, could we use the fire department on Martin Luther King? I just feel like there's not a close polling place for those people that live west of town. I mean, the closest one would be uh, Roy Walker. And I noticed that the polling place on Brady is not utilized that much. Appreciate the the question there, Commissioner Casals. We'll are, 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 are you asking instead of or in addition well, to? I mean, if we can add another polling place 
I would like to see if we could move the one from Brady to the fire department off of Martin Luther King. And if Mayor, we, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners, if I recall correctly, they we added the one on Brady to try and serve the residents that are south of, of basically the railroad. Correct. Um, if we were potentially going to move one of the locations to Station Three, and we would need to verify with Chief Nolan if we could we could do that from an access standpoint. Um, I would recommend maybe the Roy Walker one if we were going to move any of those. That one is heavily used. Roy Walker is? Mm -hmm. Roy, yes. And really because it's become a convenience center, we've even found that I think that's volleyball season, I believe. And I mean, we've had parents come in and say, oh, I can vote while I'm waiting for my kids' next game. So uh, yeah, Roy Walker, I mean, and we had 515, almost the same number that voted at the, we were at the aquatic center in, 2020 um but yeah that one is a heavily used one so yes i would not like to disturb the one at roy walker but the one on brady only had 59 voters and i i just feel like we would have a bigger outcome on votes if we move something to the west but that's my opinion well we certainly appreciate your opinion on that, Commissioner Casaus, and uh, if it's acceptable, it's something that we can we can think about. I know that Station Five is not an issue for the fire chief. He just has his employees relocate for the day, so there's actually nobody at the station during that day. I'm not sure that it would be the same instance at Station Three. But this, this will come to you as a future agenda item? No, correct? it has to be approved by the end of July. Correct. So, so at, this next, at the next commission yes. meeting? Yes. And so in between now and then, we can certainly do some research and speak with Chief Nolan regarding that potential. Great. Mayor, if I could make a quick comment. Yes, Mayor Pro Tem. I'm pretty pleased with where they're at right now myself. I think uh, the biggest thing we need to do, I think every voting uh, time that we that we have an election, people are always asking, where do I vote? You know, I think that's the biggest, the biggest thing. And I just think maybe if we market it a little bit better and maybe get the word out uh, to let people know exactly where they can vote at and the times they can vote, I think, uh, you know, our numbers hopefully will and possibly will come up. And Mayor Pro, that was one of the reasons that I had said, you know, if the commission is interested in considering Farmers Electric only because we get that confusion. In March, they're at Trinity. In June and November, they're at Farmers. Of course, I still have people call and want to know why there's nothing at the school that we haven't used in. But at the same time, it seems like Colonial, uh, the numbers are pretty high. Yes. No, Trinity Method, the one on 21st well, Trinity Street. Methodist. Well, right. And those aren't, those aren't bad. No. Um, you know, those really kind of, uh, let's see, kind of in second place from Colonial. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I feel like our locations are okay. I just think that we maybe need to get the word out a little bit better that where the locations are at and, uh, you know, maybe the available times to vote. So tonight we just kind of wanted to let you know that this is what currently is located and try to just, just get you started thinking about it. Um, over the next couple of weeks, and we'll have it for an action item uh, for your consideration at, at the next meeting. Okay. Um, and I know Ms. Melanson was trying to uh, see if you there, if there was interest in us trying to align uh, with with what the county was doing, so we would match. So um, we're happy to to make any changes that you also choose, but just really wanted to kind of get it out in front of you this evening to start considering. Okay. Well, we'll visit with Chief Nolan as well. Okay, thank you for that. Appreciate that. All right, uh, moving on in uh, communications. This evening we have a update, an update from Retail Strategies, and I believe that uh, Mr. Chris Bontrager as well as Mr. Madison Neal from Retail Strategies have joined us virtually. And I see Mr. Bontrager there. How are you this evening, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. Thank you for joining us and looking forward to the update. The floor is yours. 
I will, uh, I will point out that I uh, have a special guest this evening in our, uh, in our president, Lacey Beasley. Hi, Mayor and Commission. Thank you so much for letting us be here today to have the, uh, to give you an update on the work that we've been doing over this time. I um, enjoyed partnering with you a great deal, and, and you're in good hands with Chris and Madison. So I just wanted to be able to say hello for a minute, and I'll turn it over to Chris to run with our update. Well, I'm glad you did. It's it's nice of you to join us and greet us, Miss Beasley. We appreciate you. All right, one second, and I will get this uh, presentation set up. All right, can everyone see my screen? We can, yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Well. Uh, thank you again for having us and uh, blocking off this time out of the agenda. I know that you guys have a lot of things to do. So I will uh, I'll try to get through this pretty quickly, and then we can um, open it up for some questions. Um, just as always, uh, keep in mind there's no, uh, there's no confidential information in this presentation. All the confidential information is, uh, of course, uh, flowed, it flows through the uh, city manager's office. So... Um, any questions on anything confidential, um, address that with, uh, with city manager's office. And then, of course, if there's any questions uh, directed towards me, um, just feel free to reach out. But with that being said, I'll, uh, I'll get through this pretty quickly. Um, so I wanted to uh, give you guys a couple items that uh, the last time I spoke to the commission, of course, was during our boots on the ground tour. And then we discussed a lot of these items at that point. But a lot of the items, they hadn't been built out yet. Um, so, uh, if, for anyone that's not familiar, I wanted to show you some examples of the marketing materials that we use to represent the community. This piece in front of you is the uh, this is kind of the primary piece of marketing that we use for the market. And this is your uh, this is your marketing guide. Key really the the, the key thing to note here is um, all of the data and demographics that we use to represent the community is really boiled down to. Um, to easily digestible numbers, uh, really to, uh, to grab that attention of the retailers and uh, potential businesses. Uh, on the back side of this flyer, the, uh, for anyone that has not seen it, this is a four page front and back flyer. The, um, all of the data and information is on the front and then you open this up to a full scale aerial of the actual market. This, uh, this, is, the, this is the latest version uh, keep in mind this this uh, this piece of material here is updated in real time through the help of the, the local city staff. Any and really in real time, anytime there's any changes, if businesses come or businesses go, uh, we have this updated and back to you guys for um, to have the best and uh, really the, the best and most updated information at that time to represent the community. Um, so moving on to a couple uh, data uh, data items I wanted to walk through. If you guys remember um, when we came out and discussed really the partnership and what we would be doing, we discussed our uh, really our custom trade area or our mobile tracking capabilities. That is as a refresher. That is the data that we use that is sourced from the uh, from cellular phone uh, tracking through visitors to the community and in layman's terms it's the, the if you have your if you have your uh, GPS uh, services enabled on your phone and you step into a business this uh, this program tracks that information through the uh, location services on your phone and then when you go home at night you go to sleep it also tracks that while your phone being latent at the uh, at the end of the night so it gives us an idea of where the um, where the customers are coming from um, to shop in in Clovis this map this heat map specifically here is a uh, representation of the shoppers that are coming to uh, the annual shoppers that are coming to the Lowe's there in Clovis uh, through our research we found that the Lowe's is drastically uh, the dr drastically outperforms uh, the other retailers in the community in regards to market draw and you can see there it's a very very large draw from the and then this next slide what this shows is this is a compare and you can compare this in your hands compare this to these uh, to really the city 
uh, city proper population, and it over uh, it doubles over doubles the city proper population. And so what this shows is these are all of the customers that live within that trade area that was built off the mobile tracking data. And what that does is it gives the retailers and prospective businesses the actual uh, the actual customer base that they, they can potentially see by opening a location in the community. And what that compared to the city proper, what that does is it shows where those customers are coming from rather than uh, just the citizens of the community. So it shows that draw from the surrounding, um, surrounding area. So this next piece that I'll talk about was um, what we discussed after our boots on the ground tour during our uh, initial visit. And that is all of the properties and real estate opportunities that we identified in the community. Each one of these green nodes on this map here, they represent one of the opportunities or, the, or a um, or really a real estate opportunity in the community that was identified during that boots on the ground tour. Um, we keep this very high level. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, we don't want uh, to put any kind of confidential information out there. And those confidentiality really applies to real estate and then also specific prospects. So, uh, but I just want to give you guys a highlight of, uh, so you can see where these, uh, where these properties have been identified. And you can see the amount of properties that have been identified. Now, with that being said, in regards to confidentiality, we don't want, we never want to create any kind of conflict between property owners, or we don't want property owners to, uh, you know, to, uh, to adjust, you know, maybe adjust their, um, their approach to their, their property, if it's, if it's a listed property, based off of knowing that, um, knowing that it's being targeted. With that being said, this next slide, uh, I wanted to, I did want to highlight some materials that we create for properties. And of course, this, this is a little bit different being uh, the North Plains Mall, being your major uh, center of retail, that um, it really doesn't apply because obviously we are marketing the mall. Uh, so I wanted to show you just uh, some of the capabilities that we have. And we've created, we've, we've created countless aerials representing all of these properties. And these aerials have been provided to the city manager's office in conjunction with our uh, with our efforts. But this is just a just kind of a snapshot of some of the materials that we are creating and using really every in everyday conversations with uh, with our prospects. So moving on to the actual uh, recruitment update and status where we are currently in the engagement. As I mentioned, all of the Specific feedback is, uh, is being reported in real time. And um, so if there are any questions on specific retailers, uh, either go through the city manager's office or if there's a question that I need to answer, uh, you, can, you can go either go through the city manager's office or go, uh, go to me directly, however you like. This is just a quick overview of where we are. Uh, during our initial research phase of uh, getting started with you guys, we identified around 90 uh, total prospects that were good fits for, that should should be in the market um, that the market matches uh, based off of the based off of your peer uh, your peer markets and then based off of the data of those 90 total prospects. Uh, we are currently talking with uh, around uh, so 26 of those 90. We are in current conversations that have uh, varying degrees of interest in the market. And you see on the right side of the screen is a breakdown of the type of retailer that um, of that broken down 26. So you see eight quick service restaurants and quick service as a refresher, uh, quick service restaurants uh, fall in the category of um, if you drive through your fast food restaurants, um, six general merchandise, got a hardware sporting goods stores. That's really that category is really just a, kind of a catch-all for uh, for businesses that really sell a plethora of uh, variety of goods. So we're uh, in current conversations with six of those. Uh, as you see, four fast casual restaurants, two clothing uh, retailers, uh, one coffee shop, four health and wellness, and the health and wellness is uh, really health boutiques, and then we also incorporate um, um, really uh, any kind of any kind of fitness concepts. We, we incorporate that into that health and wellness category. 
and then one pet supply shop. So currently from our total feedback, we've had 19 real, uh, out, of the, out of the 45 total, we have 19 retailers that have just told us that, this, that they are not ready, um, that Clovis is not a, uh, a market of interest for them at this time. So of course what that means is it's not a no now, or it's to know now, but not a no forever. So what we will be doing is, while they are currently not looking at the market, we will periodically revisit with those same brands. And then as market changes, as the economy changes, as these brands shift their focus, a lot of times those, uh, those no's will end up navigating more towards interest. And uh, at that time, we'll be able to really try to uh, try to capitalize that and then snag some of those up. So it's, it's not no forever, it's just no now for those, uh, for those 19. And then, you know, lastly, and one of the most exciting things for us, especially in the, uh, especially with the past year and a half that we've had with, uh, with COVID-19 and uh, the, you know, the shelter in place, having to, uh, having to cancel the live events, we really want to highlight that uh, finally, we're starting to see these live events come back. And uh, the, the, the first one is actually coming up here pretty soon in the uh, beginning of September. The first in-person in conference for us um, since the shutdown uh, that uh, Clovis will be represented heavily at will be the retail live show uh, located in Austin, Texas. And that'll be in early September. And what you should expect uh, once we get back from that conference, you'll uh, you'll see a uh, you'll see a full conference feedback report um, on all the parties talked to on behalf of uh, of the city of Clovis, and uh, and it's really going to be a kickstart for a lot of these a lot of these interested parties that we've uh, we've been talking to. It gives us the opportunity to uh, to get further down the road with those guys, and then in some cases, you know, depending on where they are in the conversation, sometimes you can get those guys over the hump. And then one last one that I want to highlight is, um, so we have that show in September, and then we have the we also have the return of the ICSC events, and so we are really looking forward to uh, ICSC in Las Vegas. The return is uh, going to be in early to mid December, and it's it's just really going to be a care. It's really going to be fantastic to capitalize on all of the momentum that we have now. And we'll be able to carry those conversations forward where the uh, we you know we have we've not been able to do those face-to-face -face meetings over the past uh, year, year and a half. And it's, it's gonna be great for both of these conferences. Is there's uh, there's a ton of pent-up energy. Everyone is getting ready to uh, get out there and shake hands for the first time in a while. So we're really excited to get back out there and uh, see some folks for uh, for the first time in a while. And with that being said, I, that is what I had. I, I promise you I'd keep it quick and I'll just open it up for any questions that anyone has. Thank you, Mr. Bontrager. Appreciate that a lot. Uh, we may have a few questions as the commissioners think about the questions they have. I, I wanted to ask, what, what, what does ICSC stand for? That so second comp. The International Council of Shopping Centers. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Good thing you had the president there. <laughs> no, it's not that. I didn't give too credit to TSA here. But, um, there are the trade organization for um, our industry and the voice of the industry. They have about 70,000 members worldwide, and they host the majority of the conferences that bring together the retailers, the restaurants, the brokers, and municipalities or consultants like us. So it's a good chance to get some face-to-face -face time with all of the uh, industry professionals who are visiting with. Great. Thank you for that. Yeah, I was just curious what, what, what that acronym was. Um, also, I noticed on the the custom trade area, the the population, which I'm excited about, the population has has crept up from when you first analyzed that, and you're just no doubt updating things with the the census data that has come in, or has has the trade area adjusted? So the um, so we have the there are two what we have is two separate trade areas. Some of that has uh, some of that has adjusted due to the data, and so. You are uh, you are seeing much better numbers. Um, you're showing about four percent, four and a half percent growth rate across the board, and um, 
because the the original trade area that uh, that you guys did see was really kind of the core, kind of core of the community, and then the one that we are using right now, and the one that uh, you saw today is the expanded trade area, and it really is the expanded to the, the, the entire region rather than just the core of the community. Outstanding, appreciate that. I know that uh, I I view us as a as a regional hub for for retail, and so I, I love seeing that eighty three thousand plus. Uh, custom trade area. So thank you for that. And exciting to hear about the, the 26 prospects that, that, that you're working with. And uh, no doubt many of those fall into the, the gaps and the holes that we have in our, our local offerings. So we're excited about the work that you're doing and, and, and sure appreciate it. Commissioners, do you have any comments or questions for retail strategies? Commissioner sure, I a question. So I know that you, there was 90 original prospects, 45 have uh, you've made contact with. So you're you will continue to make contact with the other 45 or have they just not responded to your request? So, um, yes, so the, the, 40, uh, the 45 that we have communicated with, those are the ones that we have had active communications with. We are continuing to outreach to the entire prospect list, but that 45 is uh, the responses that we've re received up to this point. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for that. Commissioners, comments or questions? Mayor, I have a question. Uh, Mayor, I have a question. Yes, Commissioner Casals, go ahead. Uh, for Chris, I, how, why is Bovina, Texas not on the trade area? It's closer than some of the other communities that you have listed. So the, uh, the short answer is the, so the, the, the trade area is purely drawn off of, the, it's, it's purely drawn from objective data. So, uh, from the trade map, it is, or from the data, it's showing that um, that is the, the, the kind of the meat of the, the customers are coming from the, uh, from those communities that are in that custom trade area. So according to the data, you're not having as much traffic come from that community as the others. Uh, while it's not perfect, some of the, the, you will have customers coming from other areas. But that is the really kind of the conservative meat of the customers that are coming to the community. And Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Casaus, and Commissioner Casaus serves on the um, retail committee with the Chamber of Commerce, and we've been working with retail strategies and the retail committee and communicating backwards and forwards as recently as Tuesday of this week. Um, they did ask uh, for retail strategies to have a look at the map. And so they went back and looked at that, and that's how it got expanded. Hmm. Thank oh. you. Okay, thank you for that, Ms. Burroughs. Appreciate that. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bryant, you had a question. I did. Uh, Chris, with things opening back up from COVID, do you see more uh, retail merchants showing interest in communities our size? Uh, yes, sir, absolutely. And what we're, what we're finding is, you know, during... During the shutdown, the, the theory was that we would have kind of a V-shaped recovery, and um, it's really proven in the, the commercial real estate industry. It is it's absolutely proven. I would, almost to the point where I would ar almost argue that we're, get, we're almost moving faster than we were prior to the pandemic, and um, I, I don't know if it's due to just pent up aggression or whatnot, but everyone is really just kind of running like crazy. And as I mentioned with the conferences, the, uh, the first in-person conference was, was, which it was a regional show down in uh, Orlando, Florida, which very, it was very regional. So there uh, didn't cover any of the Western uh, half of the country. It was one of the most widely attended conferences that that organization has had to date. And um, to correlate that into what we're going to, what we're really looking forward to for the Austin show is that Austin is traditionally the largest event for this uh, for this organization, and usually blows the uh, Orlando Concordia show out of the water. So we're really looking forward to uh, really kind of everyone's like I said, pent up uh, interest and pent up aggression at these conferences. So short answer. Absolutely. It's just, I think it's, it's just going nonstop at this point. That's good to hear. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other comments or questions? Commissioners, I 
I'm so proud of, of you for, uh, for contracting with Retail Strategies last year. Uh, we've all known for a long time, you know, we'd like to see this or that kind of store or restaurant here, and we all kind of have that feeling. But, you know, what I really love about Retail Strategies is, is the analytical approach, you know, in, in analyzing our, our trade area and in identifying the leakage. And um, the the leakage, by the way, may, maybe that's a figure that that you that you would be updating as we go as well. But as I as memory serves, the the first report said that the the leakage from our trade area is upwards of 460 million dollars annually. And you know you start to think about that, and that's the motivation to to do retail recruitment. That was my motivation to to our motivation to work on Senate Bill 49, which which, by the way, went into law today. And um, I look forward to implementing that locally so that we can, you know, thoughtfully and proactively incentivize retail to, to fill the, the holes and gaps in, in our local offering. And retail strategies is, is, a, is an important part of that. So thanks for the update this evening. Appreciate that very much. And we feel really privileged that we got the president uh, as part of the presentation as well. Thank you, Ms. Beasley. <laughs> thank you, Mayor and Commission. It's so good to see each of you again. And, and yep. just thank you for, for your investment in retail strategies. And we're excited about the work that we're doing with you. And I'll be at the Alien Festival in Roswell this uh, coming weekend. So if any of you are there, then <laughs> be sure and uh, we can wave at each other and get a chance to catch up in person. <laughs> That's, that sounds good. Thank you for that. Appreciate you, folks. Thank you, guys. All right. Commissioners, while we're still under communications, I'm going to do something kind of risky. When you start thanking uh, people, sometimes, you know, you, you, you inevitably forget someone. But I, I just wanted to compliment uh, some of our, well, all of our city employees and our city departments. But recently, I just had the chance to, to be impressed, and it was just because of where I was and, 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 and the time of day. But uh, on the Saturday, no, the Sunday morning after Dragon Main, um, I, I had uh, a need to be down at my office really early at like 6 o'clock in the morning. And I thought, well, I'll just drive up and down Main Street. You know, the Dragon Main had just happened the night before. I wonder what things look like. And it was Sunday morning. It was Father's Day. And the city crews were out picking up barricades, picking up trash, putting things back together, you know, and, and it just it just reminded me that, you know, behind really everything that goes on in our community, our city employees, you know, preparing things ahead of time, putting it back together afterwards. And um, and I and I was just very appreciative. And I just wanted to compliment um, the uh, public works folks. Uh, for, for that. I also wanted to mention this evening the building safety and code enforcement. Um, we've put a lot on them as a commission by saying we want to clean things up, right? And, and they're really answering that call with uh, the graffiti removal and with the different cleanup projects that they've taken on. And by the way, when they do a big cleanup project, you know, they're, they're partnering with Public Works for the trucks and for the manpower and for, you know, everything. And so our, our city departments are, are really just doing a great job. And I, and I just wanted to compliment the, the city uh, on, on those things. Um, and like, if that wasn't enough, I wanted to, after we were, we were picking up after the soapbox derby last Saturday and um, you know, it's late in the day, it's hot. Those of us that are volunteers were tired. And uh, of course the city had blocked off the streets for the soapbox derby and the crews were coming through to pick up the barricades. And uh, there were a couple of, couple of men uh, with the city that just stopped and, and they were so friendly and helpful and they helped us load our ramps onto, onto the trailer and, and you know, ask was there anything else that they could help us with. And just this spirit of, of uh, you know, helpfulness and, and, and just, just a great attitude was, was, was evident. So I wanted to say thanks for that. And with that, do we have any other communications? Anyone from the public that wishes to share uh, with the commission this evening? Commissioners, do you have anything under communications? All right. Well, we will move on then in our agenda to the consent agenda. Commissioners, as you know, this item is placed on the agenda so that the commission by unanimous consent can designate those routine agenda items that they wish to be approved or acknowledged by one motion if any proposal does not meet with the approval of all commission members or if a citizen so requests that item will be heard when reached under the regular agenda 
Commissioners, five items there on the consent agenda this evening. The first is the motion to place. The fifth is the motion to approve or acknowledge. I'll read two through four. Item two is request for approval of adoption of resolution number 3066-2021 pertaining to meetings of the City Commission of the, of the City of Clovis, New Mexico, pertaining also to meetings of any board, commission, or other policy-making body of said city prescribing public notices to be given for regular, special, and emergency meetings of said city commission and any of said boards, commissions, or other policy-making bodies, declaring the prescribed notices to be reasonable notice as required by sections 10-15-1 through 10-15-4 NMSA 1978 and containing a repealer, a repealer clause. Item three, request for approval to appoint John King to serve on the Civil Aviation Board. Item four, request for approval to appoint Kevin Cass to serve on the, uh, serve as the district, district three representative on the Economic Incentive Board. Commissioners, unless you have concerns or questions about these items, I'd entertain a motion to place the indicated items on the consent <coughs> agenda by unanimous vote. So moved. Second. Motion from Mayor Pro Tem Bryant, second from Commissioner Lovett, commissioners, please vote. And Commissioner Casaus, may I have your vote, please? Yes. Commissioner Madrid, may I have your vote, please? Yes. Thank you. And the vote is unanimous, and the motion is carried. The items have been placed on the consent agenda. I would now entertain a motion to approve or acknowledge all items on the consent agenda. Make a motion to. Second. Make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a mo motion to approve from Commissioner Lovett and a second from Commissioner Rowley. Commissioners, please vote. Commissioner Casaus, may I have your vote, please? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Madrid, your vote, please? Yes. Thank you. And the vote is unanimous. The motion is carried. Thank you. We are on to introduction and adoption of resolutions and ordinances. One item there this evening. And it is request for approval of adoption of resolution number 3074-2021, approving a water project fund loan grant agreement in the amount of $5,792,829, including a loan amount of $579,283 and a grant amount of $5,213,400. Excuse me. Excuse me. I will start over on that that uh, that amount there, and a grant amount of five million two hundred and thirteen thousand five hundred and forty six dollars for water project fund loan grant number WPF fifty ninety three to finance the finished water three A pipeline construction project and other details concerning the loan grant agreement, confirming and approving the city's adjusted loan contribution as established by the 2020 finance plan of the Eastern New Mexico Water Utility Authority, ratifying act actions heretofore taken, repealing all action inconsistent with this resolution, authorizing the taking of other actions in connection with the execution and delivery of the loan grant agreement and confirming matching funds for the finished water 3A project. <laughs> and. Uh, I didn't quite get that. Mayor, can you read that again? <laughs> I, I wondered. How about I just run through it again? Yeah, no. Um, we actually have uh, the administrator uh, from the Eastern Mexico Water Utility Authority, Mr. Orlando Ortega, joining us this evening. And he's going to give us a, a little bit of an explanation on this resolution before us this evening. Mr. Ortega, thank you so much for being here. And I'll give you the floor. Thank you, Mayor Morris and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bryant and members of the commission. Uh, yeah, it's that was a long introduction, but a very important one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this this resolution before you is in regard to a water trust board uh, application that the Eastern New Mexico Water Utility Authority applied for back in uh, 2019, um, and with that, uh, these applications. Uh, uh, help fund the uh, the efforts of the uh, Eastern New Mexico Water Utility Authority in building the pipeline to Ute Reservoir. Um, part of the funding, or the way the uh, the authority funds their projects, are through are through three 
uh, funding resources. One is the federal government up to 75% of, of the project. Uh, the remaining 25% comes from the state of New Mexico and the member communities. So 15% of that comes from the state of New Mexico, mostly through water trust board applications and funding that you see tonight. Uh, we come to you about once a year with these water trust board applications and uh, funds. Uh, generally, uh, we've been very fortunate to be awarded year after year on these to, to help us with our project. So, um, again, that 15% of the state funding comes generally from this. Every once in a while, we do get a, a capital outlay uh, fund or an award from maybe the governor or a state legislator that we also uh, use uh, for this. But we generally mostly get all of our state funding through this Water Trust Board. Uh, WPF 1593, we are, uh, we've reached a point where we're ready to close this so we can use those funds. 90% uh, of this is of the total amount, uh, which is, um, the total amount is five million seven ninety two eight twenty nine. Ninety percent of that is is grant. Ten percent of that is in in a loan, and and that's the way the uh, the water trust board structures these. They determine the percentage. Uh, we've been very fortunate that our percentages have been ninety percent grant and ten percent loan. Uh, so anyway, tonight uh, this resolution that's before you. Uh, allows you to, to either accept it or deny it. We, we hope that you accept it so we can uh, use that funding to continue our project. Uh, but it also tells you that you are obligated for your allocated portion of that loan. So for example, the, uh, uh, the resolution reads that uh, the uh, city of Clovis is obligated for the, I'm trying to find the percentage here, 70, here at, um, I'll, have to, I'll have to look at the resolution. 76.34% uh, of that loan portion is the obligation to the city of Portales, I mean to the city of Clovis, my apologies. Uh, I can tell you that your annual membership is what pays for this. Uh, we don't come to you and say, hey, you need to pay this extra. Uh, your, your annual contributions towards the, 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 uh, the pipeline effort uh, pays for this loan. I also want to point out that uh, three years ago, the Eastern New Mexico Water Utility Board of, of Directors uh, uh, implemented a debt reduction program. So we wouldn't come to you every year and ask you to approve these loans and they just pile up in debt. So three years ago, uh, the board implemented a, a debt reduction program and since then we've paid off three additional loans along with our annual payments on the, the loans that are in the books. Uh, we also have another uh, payoff scheduled for August, so that'll make our fourth loan that we're paying, that we will have paid off uh, in three years. So I'm, I'm very proud of our board to have uh, put that program in place. We call it pay as you go. You know, if we take a loan, we should pay one off. That way there's no additional debt to our member communities. So uh, with that said, um, I, I really do encourage you uh, to accept this uh, resolution tonight and adopt it uh, so we can uh, use this funding for uh, the project that we actually have approved and and uh, is, in, is engaged right now, which is Finish Water 3A. That's about two-thirds of the pipeline to Portales. Uh, so it's 11.5 miles. And uh, July 6th, which is, I believe, next Tuesday or Wednesday, is the uh, notice to proceed date for the contractor. And they are already uh, surveying and will actually begin bringing equipment in and delivery of pipe. Uh, for that project, and we have uh, about 360 days to complete that project. Thank you so much, Mr. Ortega. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the job you do at the Water Authority. I'm glad to uh, do it. And uh, thank you for being here this evening to give us an explanation. Commissioners, any questions about this resolution before us? No questions, Mayor, but uh, Mr. Ortega, thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate your comments. and. And uh, just to everybody know that the money we do receive in funding, whether it's from the federal, state, or locally, goes into the construction of this project. And it is definitely moving forward. We're making good progress with this, uh, with this project. So I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Motion to approve from Mayor Pro Tem Bryant. 
I'll second. Uh, second from Commissioner Paula. Thank you for that. Commissioners, please vote. Commissioner Kasaus, may I have your vote, please? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Madrid, may I have your vote, please? Yes. Thank you. And by a vote of six to zero, the motion is carried. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Mr. Thank Ortega. You. Thank you. All right, commissioners, uh, we have nothing to deal with under unfinished business. So we will move on to new business where we have three items this evening. The first is request for approval of two City of Clovis representatives to serve on the Eastern New Mexico Water Utility Authority. Uh, there's a theme tonight. There's, there's quite a bit tonight about the Water Utility Authority. Uh, commissioners, as you know, the, the City of Clovis has three seats on that board. Uh, currently, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bryant uh, sits on that board and actually serves as secretary. Uh, Commissioner Garza sits on the board as a, as a member. His term is actually expiring. And, uh, and then you have me there as the third. And, and when you appointed me there just a few months ago, it was to complete the term uh, where there was a vacancy. So, so I'm actually up uh, now as well. And so, um, Ms. Burroughs, did you want to expand on any of that? Oh, no, thank you, okay. Mayor. All right, <laughs> thank you. I'm, I'm just running away with it. Um, so uh, with that being said, um, I believe that uh, uh, Commissioner Garza it has has indicated that you know he he enjoys serving on the board and and is happy to continue serving um, and uh, obviously I would be happy if you would if you'd leave me there uh, but uh, this is an opportunity for anyone else uh, that's that's on the commission to speak up and say that they would like to be there um, and we can have a discussion on that what is the will of the commission mayor I've had the conversation with both of you I think both your both of you are willing to serve, and of course you're uh, chairman of the Water Authority. So I'll make a motion that we reappoint you and appoint Commissioner Garza to represent the city of Clovis on the Eastern New Mexico Water Utility Authority Board. Thank you for that. A uh, motion has been made by Mayor Pro Tem Bryant. Second. And a second from Commissioner Paula. Thank you for that. Commissioners, please vote. Commissioner Casaus, may I have your vote, please? Thank you. Commissioner Madrid. Yes. Thank you, sir. And by a vote of six to zero, the motion is carried. Thank you, commissioners. Appreciate that. Uh, next item under new business is request for approval to accept American Recovery Program funds in the amount of $9,469,289. Ms. Burroughs, can you give us explanation on this one? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. On packet page 37, uh, there's a background summary regarding these funds which are coming to us from the federal government, um, this American Recovery Program. <coughs> they, uh, the funds are coming related to the impacts of COVID-19 on our area. They may be used in four different areas which have um, identified in that background summary. They are Broadly speaking, public health and economic impacts, premium hazard pay, lost revenue replacement and infrastructure projects. There's no f matching funding to this uh, to this award, um, but Leanne needs to submit the application by tomorrow if we are to uh, to go ahead and apply and accept these funds. Um, a new fund will be created as part of the final budget if uh, you decide this evening you'd like to go ahead with this. Um, we have not identified any uses for these funds. Of course, we will have some ideas, but we will um, begin to discuss with you as we move forward how the funds will uh, be expended. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Burroughs. Mayor. Yes, Commissioner Casals. I think this is an excellent idea. I, um, I think we need to really do a lot of planning on this. I would like the community to get involved and let us know what all that they would like for the community. Um, with that being said, I make a motion that we do apply. Okay, thank you. We have a motion. And Mayor, before we get to the second on that, yeah. so these funds, is my understanding, so we have to spend them, is it by 2025 or 2026? That's correct. 
Okay, so there's plenty of time to get these in place. And if we don't get it spent, then the remaining money would just be returned? Is there any penalties, anything? That's my understanding that it would be returned. Um, but I sure hope that we would not leave any money on the table. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. As a commissioner, I would certainly hope that we don't leave any money on the table as well. I, I won't make a second until, does anybody else like to say anything? Okay. Yep. With that being said, I will second Commissioner Kosaus's approval. Thank you for that motion. Um, Mayor, Mayor President, and, and I just, like, just for informational purposes, I mean, when we say infrastructure pro projects, there is certain limitations on the infrastructure projects that we can utilize them for. Um, it is limited to water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. Um, and so as we continue to uh, gather guidance uh, put out by the, by the federal government, um, that will certainly have to guide what we can and cannot utilize the funds for. So uh, it's not $9.4 million just to use at our disposal. So uh, there are definitely restrictions limiting the funds what they can be used for. I, I appreciate that, and, and so we reasonably expect more guidance coming um, on on allowable uses for the funds. That is correct, and also, uh, you know, from an infrastructure standpoint, speaking towards water or sewer projects, you know, we've got a lot of grant applications that we're waiting to come for in or find out about whether or not we're successful on those. Um, so from a strategy standpoint, it may be best to just wait uh, and give it some time to see if some other things play out before we make any final decisions. Yeah, appreciate that. And, and just to be clear, the uh, the money will um, will come into to our budget and have its own line in our our budget, so that we're able to uh, see it there and yes. and, and uh, understand the allowable uses and make decisions wisely regarding that. Yep. All right, great. Thank you for that. So we have a a motion to um, uh, accept the American Recovery Funds from Commissioner Casaus and the second came from Commissioner Lovett. Commissioners, please vote. Commissioner Madrid, may I have your vote, please? Yes. Thank you, sir. And the vote is unanimous. The motion is carried. Thank you, commissioners. Third item under new business this evening, request for approval of professional contract agreement between the city of Clovis and Clovis Main Street for fiscal year 2021-2022. Ms. Burroughs. Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. Um, you received a contract last evening, a draft contract. The city manager and myself have been liaising with, uh, with members of the Main Street program during the course of the week with regard to the renewal of, uh, well, they got a new contract. Um, you approved the last one in October, mid-October of last year. Um, the, the changes to this contract is that it's, this one is for a $40,000 uh, contract on a time and materials basis um, with monthly invoices and continuing, of course, with uh, monthly re progress reports. Um, we have included, last time, you also had included a $10,000 um, uh, funding for historic plaque placement plan. And that's been actually incorporated into the, um, the agreement this time, which is uh, showing on page two, um, item 4L. And with that, I stand for any questions. Thank you. Thank you for that explanation. Ms. Burroughs, uh, commissioners, do we have questions? Yeah, Mayor, just so on these contracts, it's time and material. Who, who is the one that's confirming that this is being completed and the, the time? I mean, is, is, it, is it you, uh, Justin? Yeah, Mayor, Mayor, Pro Tem, and Commissioners, Commissioner Levitt. Um, as part of their invoices uh, with our time and material contracts that we have, they submit to us. Um, basically, for example, like Mr. Morris's contract, he gives us a breakdown of what he's been working on and the hours that they worked on that. And so then that's how we know uh, and are able to track those invoices, and it, and it would be included with the monthly invoice. Nice. And I really am excited about what's going down on our Main Street. Uh, Dragon Main with, uh, was phenomenal with the new entities coming downtown. 
Um, I certainly think that there's opportunities for this contract to be used appropriately to better our city. So, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Okay. Make a motion for approval. Second. Motion to approve from Commissioner Lovett, and the second came from Commissioner Kasaus. Unless there's any more discussion, commissioners, please vote. Uh, Commissioner Madrid, if I could have your vote, please. Yes. Thank you. And the vote is unanimous. The motion is carried. All right, commissioners, that has us on to uh, reports of boards, officers, and committees. I have at least one report. Does anyone else have a report this evening? I can report. Yeah, Commissioner Paula, please. Okay, I'll report on the uh, Parks and Rec meeting that we had on Monday evening. It was held at Roy Walker, and if you haven't been to Roy Walker since it's reopened, you need to go and check out the painting that has been done there. It is amazing. It looks very fresh, very clean. Uh, the flags don't have dust on them anymore, and I'm highly impressed. I had no idea that librarians could paint as well as they can paint. <laughs> so, good job. Uh, we also discussed uh, the uh, problem with vandalism at park restrooms. And we, we need the city's help. Uh, the, excuse me, obviously the city is working very hard to keep this from happening, but we need the uh, citizens' help. If you see something, please call the police and make a report because I know the uh, Parks and Rec Department is working very, very hard to try and make these restrooms open and available to the public, especially during the summertime. Um, but we've had terrible vandalism, so please uh, pay attention to that. Uh, we also had an update on the uh, Kaboom grant that the city has applied for to receive some new playground equipment, um, and hopefully we will be successful with that. And uh, we also were able to see a couple of examples of some new playground equipment um, that is going to come from a uh, $75,000 capital outlay project um, money that we did receive so that will be coming soon and put on your calendars the trek for trash that will be held on october 9th of this year and that is all well do thank you for that commissioner paula i appreciate that report any other reports mayor i'll just give, give one on the public works committee thanks mayor pro tem uh, we met on june 23rd and uh, talked about residential paving projects in each district and there'll be one area that in each district that we will uh, take into consideration. Uh, those will be discussed at the next public works meeting in July. We also discussed the process to apply for a permit for curb cuts and excavation uh, permitting. And hopefully uh, this process will streamline the, uh, the process to get that, to get that done. Uh, we also, uh, there's a scheduled public meeting for the Martin Luther King project, which will notify everyone in a one mile area. Public is scheduled for 6.30 p.m. July 7th. That will be held at Roy Walker. Eighth. The eighth? Uh, yep, I, re I reported incorrectly at the public works committee. It's you actually did. the eighth. Okay, I apologize. Okay. Be July the eighth yes, at Roy Walker Recreational Center. Uh, also, uh, Kay Barnett has started working on the intersection at 7th and Thornton. Which is right. Do you know front. anything about that? I do know yeah. a little bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I've also but I've also enjoyed the moisture that we're receiving. So it'll get done. Uh, they are regrading and concreting the intersection to improve water flow. They're also putting in electrical conduit for the traffic signals. So that's an ongoing project and uh, we'll be uh, happy to see that get accomplished and done. So thank you. Thank you for that report, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, any other reports? No, but I would like to publicly say I think it's a uh, just just a moment, Commissioner yeah. Madrid. You know, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, 
brings up a great point. When, when the city goes through some construction and some improvements to our city, it does affect folks and especially our businesses. So I appreciate your great attitude about that. But to our public, let's make sure we find our ways around the barriers and we still support these businesses uh, because they are at a loss during this time. So uh, I appreciate you. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioner Levitt. Uh, Mayor, if I could just say one more thing. We yes, do sir. have a number of committee positions available uh, on a lot of our committees. So if you are interested in serving on any of our committees, please notify uh, uh, City Hall or go online at uh, www.cityofclovis.org and apply to be on a committee. Thank you. Thank you for that report. Um, other reports? Oh, that's right. Commissioner Madrid called for the floor. Commissioner yeah, Madrid, yeah. I, I didn't mean to forget about you there. Uh, we'll give you the floor, sir. shooting range out there so they might have to park out there it's just a thought we were just talking about it so nothing said in stone okay thank so you I wanted to bring that up yeah thank thanks for bringing that up appreciate that you know i i appreciate all you commissioners and and the the time and effort that you put in and serving on all of these committees and and uh, helping to work through the 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 business of the city uh, these committees are are staffed by you as well as citizens and they are vital to uh, to the operation of the city and important in uh, recommendations coming to us as, as a as a commission so thank you for that I'd, I'd like to report uh, briefly uh, on the Eastern New Mexico Water Utility Authority we've we've, we've had some uh, some discussion about that this evening but uh, um, can't uh, can't overstate the the importance of of that that entity and the Ute pipeline project for our community and what that means for us going forward um, in um, one day being connected to the reservoir at Ute in order to have a uh, renewable source of water uh, for um, for our community a, a supplemental source of water uh, as as you heard earlier as we entertain that that resolution finished water 3a is is going to begin uh, construction next week on the 6th and so you know that's exciting that that's the the part of the project that extends south towards Portales and um, so so people are gonna see that and and this this really starts to become even more real I think um, that you'd be glad to know that that the utility authority uh, runs so efficiently uh, that 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 we're able to have multiple projects going on at, at one time um, that that Finnish Water 3A gets gets us close to the Portales system, but we already have a plan in place for Finnish Water 3B and the funding already in place for the, for that to uh, to be completed as soon as 3A is finished. And so we'll have the um, the the base, the the Clovis system, and the Portales system all connected in um, in not too not too far into the future so that's exciting wanted to report at our last board meeting which was held on the the 24th um, some of the other things that that the board approved was a resolution pertaining to the matching funds uh, with um, the uh, design and easement uh, acquisition and construction uh, pertaining to finished water one so we just talked about going south to Portales finished water one goes north toward uh, toward the cap rock and ultimately toward the reservoir and so uh, you know that's exciting that, that we're already uh, working on that as well and expect to have a bid package uh, for the for that phase of the project ready by the end of this year so things are are moving along also at the last meeting we um, we approved a resolution pertaining to get this raw water three which uh, which is the section of the, the the pipeline that would be on the other side of the, the proposed treatment plant uh, out north and uh, raw water three would actually get us all the way to the edge of the cap rock so you know from there you can you can just about see the reservoir and so you know it's just exciting to see this project advancing um, wanted to let you know uh, at the last meeting also we approved our meeting schedule for the next year you can drop in anytime you like uh, 3 p.m. Uh, on the last Thursday of the month with the exception of this month we had to move the meeting uh, to um, 
uh, accommodate uh, a, a trip to Washington, D.C. So I uh, wanted to report briefly as well on the, the reservoir itself. I don't think we can uh, <coughs> uh, understand enough about just how viable this project is, and, and, and that's, that's evidence in the, in the data that's available to all of us at uh, United States Geological Survey. Um, you, there's instrumentation uh, down at the reservoir, and so you're able to look at this. I wanted to tell you that today, July 1st, the elevation level of the reservoir is, is 3,778 feet. What does that mean? <laughs> it's 10 feet from the crest of the spillway. And uh, Ute Reservoir is, is a storage reservoir. Uh, so Ute Reservoir is not releasing water downstream. The only thing that goes downstream is that that goes over the top of the spillway. So, you know, when, when, when we think about uh, uh, being 10 feet from the crest of the spillway, what, you know, what does that mean in terms of storage? There's 145,700, excuse me, 145,700 acre feet of storage in the reservoir today. The, the total reservation that the authority members will take once connected annually is 16,415 acre feet. So there's 145,000 acre feet of storage in the reservoir today. The, the amount that we would draw annually as authority members is 16,415. Of that, uh, Clovis's reservation is 12,500. So I just wanted to share that. I'll, I'll update you on that uh, periodically just to, to kind of help us all keep a realistic view of, of just how viable uh, the, the project is and just how important it is to our community. I also had planned to uh, try and give a report on senior services, but earlier Ms. Riggin did a great job of telling you about what's going on with senior services. So um, I don't have any other reports. Any other reports? All right, very good. We will talk then about future agenda items. I, I know that uh, a future agenda item um, will be um, the uh, results of the charter review work. Um, the charter review committee, which uh, I was a part of, as well as Commissioner Rowley and Commissioner Paula, um, has, has concluded. I think we met, was it three or four times? Three times. Uh, so we had a total of three meetings, and there are some recommendations that are, that are coming our way from the charter review, and we may have that at the next, at the next meeting. Okay, very good. Other agenda items for the future? Uh, we have the polling locations resolution that Leanne was speaking about, and then the introduction of an ordinance regarding cannabis regulations. Yes, all right, thank you very much. All right, guys, uh, commissioners, we'll talk about announcement of date time and place of city board and commission meetings. As far as we know, are these all on? Okay. Uh, city Hall will be closed this coming Monday, July 5th, in observance of Independence Day. Civil Aviation Board will meet at 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday, July 6th, here in the North Annex. Planning and Zoning Commission will meet at 3 p.m. on Wednesday, July 7th, here in the North Annex. Water Policy Advisory Committee will meet at 8.30 a.m. Tuesday, July 13th, here in the North Annex. Lodgers Tax Advisory Board will meet at 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday, July 13th here in this room. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission will meet at 3 p.m. Wednesday, July 14th here in the North Annex. And our next City Commission meeting is at 5.15 on Thursday, July 15th. Commissioners, thank you very much. We are adjourned.